There are customs that have overcome the passing of decades, by now of centuries, which have sometimes changed or adapted to modern times, without, however, losing that mantle of tradition that also succeeds in periods such as those in which we live, which tend to depersonalize and divide. On the contrary, to unite to safeguard the spirit of a people. If you notice, in cultures even very different from each other or separated by centuries, Similar elements appear, which can be collimated or from which customs and habits have developed, which have then become classic and proper to epochs subsequent to the ones in which they have their roots. It happens in every field, from religious to military, for example. Several of the Christian holidays are the adaptation to the calendar of pagan anniversaries, or do you know the salvos of honor fired during the funeral of a war hero? It seems in certain African tribes, such as the Zulu, it was usual to throw spears and arrows into the sky at the death of a great warrior to ward off evil spirits that could undermine his journey to the afterlife. Even in less solemn areas, similarities can always be seen along this line. What the hell is this all about? It's easy to say with an example. Have you ever heard of Miss Navajo? I can assure you this position is very different from how it might sound, and that no one will answer here that her greatest desire is to be an actress and world peace. Miss Navajo Nation is a real contest, held annually on the Navajo Reservation, starting in 1952. The very first was Dr. Beulah Melvin Allen, crowned at the Navajo Nation Fair, the most important of those territories, inaugurated three years earlier. According to the rules, the contestants must be unmarried, at least 18 years old, have a high school diploma, and they must be able to speak the Navajo language, or Denebizad. They acquire scores following various steps to test their competence. For example, regarding the traditional habits of their people, they must answer various questions about the government, history, and current affairs of the Navajo Nation. They must perform in a particular skill that is a talent that concerns the Navajo people in the strict sense with one, let's say, contemporary, and are measured in practical tests such as making bread and even butchering sheep. There is also a documentary called Miss Navajo, directed by Mr. Billy Luther, who mixes Navajo, Hopi, and Laguna Pueblo blood in his veins, shot between 2005 and 2006. The documentary film tells the story of seven young girls who decide to participate in the competition. The protagonists themselves, together with the viewer, realize that the show is not about empty and conventional standards of beauty. It is not about superficial values. It is about being an independent Navajo woman, but deeply attached to the soul of her people, who wants to respectfully represent her own culture and not just be, but serve as a model while preserving the language and tradition of her nation. Over the span of five days, the Miss Navajo pageant is made up of different categories of challenges that test the participants regarding their knowledge and skills. It may be useful to define the reservation geographically. It occupies a vast territory that extends into the states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the U.S. Census Office, it has an area of more than 70,000 square kilometers. It was established in 1868 as a result of a treaty between the Navajos and the U.S. government after the attempt to confine the Navajos to Bosque Redondo. This location along the Pecos River is set in New Mexico and has gone down in history because in the years from 1863 to 1868, it was chosen as the first reservation for Navajos and Mescaleros but, as they say, this is another story. The original size covered only about a quarter of the current one. The actual territory is divided into five agencies, which correspond to as many agencies of the BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, part of the Department of the Interior. Each agency is further divided into chapters, which constitute the smallest political unit of the Navajo Nation. Being Miss Navajo, we said, means experiencing a role that includes responsibility, courage, and leadership. 
This appointment represents a tradition we may define as sacred, and the position with which the young winner is invested includes a considerable awareness felt by all the participants to be a reference example for the entire Navajo Nation. They take the role very seriously. Obviously, one of the tasks required for the winner of the competition is attending the most disparate inaugurations. If you are curious to know more in depth the current reality of the Diné people, you can follow the activity of the president of the Navajo Nation, Mr. Jonathan Nez, or of the Navajo Nation Council, currently in force, with a base in Window Rock. If you are particularly interested, you can also browse the news of the NNWO, Navajo Nation Washington office, a real government extension of the council. We can already understand the intrinsic importance about welcoming others for this people. When we look at the home page of the Navajo Council website, we are greeting with an expression that stands out at the top with an exclamation point, Yate! This, this is the common way to greet in Navajo. In person, it's always accompanied, as should be done everywhere, by a handshake. Literally, it means, that's good, okay. It can also be used not as an introductory greeting, but since it's not usual to say to someone goodbye in the guise of, see you later. Furthermore, yat e abine is equivalent to good morning in the Navajo language. Returning to the core of our chat, delving deeper into the topic, we may underline there is not a single miss, but that the bands and the same number of crowns are more than one, even within the same nation. What's striking is the fact that with each new appointment, homage is paid to the winner of the previous year, thanking her for the job done and for the service rendered to the entire community. It doesn't seem at all strange, therefore, that misses from various competitions know each other, and they appear together on certain official occasions, always showing great mutual respect. According to the areas of the reservation, there are seven annual fairs. What are the differences between the roles of the various misses? Well, the basics of the contest are pretty much the same. Competitions are held on traditional talent, for example, carpet weaving, contemporary talent, for example, singing. There may be a parade in evening dresses and sometimes contestants fry bread or traditional food. Miss Navajo must also, like we said, butcher a sheep within a set time limit. They also have to answer a question posed in the Navajo language correctly to show they know it. But this requirement has started to fail some competitions. In addition to Miss Navajo, there are four regional contests, Miss Northern, Miss Eastern, Miss Southwest, and Miss Central. What about Southern? Well, there are a lot of chances that there isn't a Miss Southern because the capital, Window Rock, is to the south, so that area falls under the jurisdiction of the Great Navajo Nation Fair. The shows take place in connection with the regional fairs. There is a jury usually made up of prominent members of the community or winners of other competitions, which awards each competitor a certain number of points in each competition. Hardly anyone uses it, but the correct term for Miss Navajo is Nabeho Bit Eke, which literally means daughter of the Navajo people. The crowns are commissioned by the shows and made by local silversmiths. Miss Navajo's crown is passed down every year Except in unusual circumstances, for example, Jocelyn Billy, Miss Navajo at the turn of the years 2006-2007, prestigious guest at the fairs in which she does not disdain to get her hands dirty, even helping to butcher some head of cattle, socially committed to safeguarding the figure of women in Navajo society, was a miss so exceptional they let her keep the crown. Some of the regional competitions basically allow winners to hold crowns, too. They are usually decorated with sacred Navajo stones, turquoise, coral, lava, and with the symbols of the four sacred mountains and other Diné cosmology. Every Miss Navajo has a program, or cause or problem, to which she is dedicated and committed during her reign. She appears at various events throughout the year and gives speeches to promote her cause. You'll see her at diplomas, 
ribbon cuttings, lectures and other ceremonial events, as well as at outreach parades. She also appears in events outside the reservation as a kind of ambassador of the Navajo people. In representative occasions, each miss must wear her own crown, and there are different styles. Represented on the crown, you may be able to see the great seal of the Navajo Nation, which represents sovereignty, independence, and tradition for the Diné people. Not to forget to mention Zifna Udiste and Zif Cho'oli. Standing there is the gates of the Navajo Nation. These are two sacred mountain peaks of the Navajo Reservation. Homage is often traditionally paid to white shell woman, whose essence lives in all women, and is embodied by Miss Navajo Nation herself. There are four sacred mountains for the Navajos, Sisnajini, Mount Blanca, Tzodzil, Mount Taylor, Doko Oslid, San Francisco Peaks, Debentsa, Hesperus Peak. But there are also two others, Sithnaoditli, as the place where the first man and the first woman Altse Hastin and Altse Atza reside, and Ch'oli as the birthplace of Yoskai Atza, White Shell Woman. White Shell Woman appears in the creation stories of various Native American tribes, including the Navajos, Zunis, and Apaches. According to Dene Bahane, the story of the people, since Dene, the name by which the Navajos are called, really means the people, White Shell Woman is the sister of Changing Woman Goddess. Created when Talking God and the wind blew life into two shells, the sisters felt lonely and sought company, Changing Woman with the sun and White Shell Woman with a mountain stream. They gave birth to two children, raised to fight the monsters that roamed earth. In some Navajo stories, White Shell Woman and Changing Woman become the same character. According to the Navajos, when White Shell Woman went to live alone, Talking God and other deities came to visit her. They brought ears of corn wrapped in sacred blankets, from which a man and a woman were created, who became the ancestors of the Diné people. This realization was born in the name of that brotherhood among peoples that should be respected by everyone, by those who welcome, but also by those who are welcomed, no matter whether they are in a tribe or in a new state, a brotherhood that transcends or should transcend, time, and that if it had always been honored with facts and without too many words full of wind, it would have made our entire world a better place, not only during a specific time or in a determined place.